What's up guys, Bloodshed here, bringing you the Monk starter build for Diablo 3 patch 270 and season 23. If you don't know about the series, we take you from level one recommendations, help your launch night start successfully all the way up into like the full six piece set bonus and give you builds and suggestions along the way. Honestly, these videos do take a long time to make. So if you could just do me a favor and leave a like on the video, I would be much appreciated. And the, the bell notification would be a cherry on top. All these videos are based around saving your challenge of cash as of right no, we don't know when the season will start. So just save your challenge drift the week the season starts, whenever that is. It usually resets on a Monday, so just don't do it. Save it and then you can max out your blacksmith. You can roll blood shards at level one. You have like a whole cavalcade of goodies to play with. So that's where this story begins. Level one blood shard recommendations. At level one for monk, you got to go bracers. If you don't know, they changed gundo gear. So now there's a 100% multiplier on the bracers and it's one of the best leveling skills as well. You can obviously get Caesar's Memento or Pinto's Pride. All three bracers have a multiplier associated with them. So either one is a good option if you happen to land a bracer. If I got one bracer, I might start rolling pants just to get those pox falls. This season, it's the thousand storm set. So it's the generator punchy punchy type set. So you're going to be close to the mobs. Those pox falls are going to be triggering nonstop, giving you that damage for the level 70 hope of cane upgrade. You know, you get the one free upgrade for saving your challenger of cash. You could go to fist weapons, one handed fist weapon. There's a lot of goodies in here that could help your early game, late game, depending on what build you're playing, whether it's Yuliana's or the Wan Kim Lao for Tempest Rush. But I would go two hand diabos as there's about four out of eight good items here. So I feel like I have a 50 50 shot. Well, with the one handed fist weapons, it's a lower percentage than that. The balance buffs the damage of Tempest Rush by 600%. So that's incredible. And if you get the bracers right at level one, it kind of pairs together nicely. Flying Dragon doubles your attack speed when attacking, which it's a generator kind of a set season. So this is a really good synergy, particularly this season around. Incense Torch buffs Wave of Light, the famous Wave of Light weapon. This would be amazing while leveling with the big 550 multiplier and the reduced cost resource. And then you can get the Flow of Eternity, which buffs Seven Sided Strike. It's not as big, but it does also reduce the cooldown. If you have strong convictions to go for the one handed fist weapon because you want something really good like the Wan Kim Lao or the Vengeful Wind or whatever, feel free to go for it. This is really just a dice roll, right? It's all RNG depending on what you get. So as long as you're rolling weapons, I feel like you have a really good chance at something great. For leveling from one to 70, you definitely wanna focus on your generator abilities as they hit really hard for Monk. That's kind of what Monk is all about, those big punches. You have Fist of Thunder, Deadly Reach, and Crippling Wave. Each of the three major attacks have a strong rune. Uh, Crippling Wave has Mangle, and that's probably what I would do most of the time, but each one has like a big two to 300% multiplier on their punches. So look for the big ones and go for those. So that would be your first step. The second step obviously would be to build around whatever bracer you get, whether that's Wave of Light with Pintos, EP with Gundo Gear. I probably would use EP even if I didn't have Gundo Gear and then Tempest Rush with Caesar's Memento as they all synergize, right? That So I would punch to build up my resource and then whichever spender I had to go with the corresponding bracer, that's what I would use to level with. To synergize with the play style, one of the best passives you can get at level 20 is Seize the Initiative. Dealing damage to enemies above 75% life increases your attack speed by 30% for four seconds. So this is amazing as you always have this pretty much attack speed buff. There's an attack speed buff with dash. There's another passive called alacrity here. Pretty much from leveling all the way till you get your six piece set bonus with the thousand storm set, you're gonna be thinking about attack speed nonstop as this is just gonna totally increase your DPS overall. Remember to keep an eye out for some of these really good legendaries while leveling as they have interesting multipliers that you wouldn't traditionally look for that could really carry you all the way from leveling to the GR20 clear and beyond. Like the Band of Hollow Whispers is like the haunt spell for Witch Doctor, it just continuously haunts enemies. And on T1, it takes elites to half health just by itself. It's really good, right? So Death Watch Mantle, Heart of Iron, all these things you get along the way. And if you don't have room on your character, just give them to your follower as we have a new follower season to look out for. Yes, yes, yes. Followers can equip 13 items and their relic with a total of 14. They have all revamped, redone abilities and they affect your sheet in a really good way. All that sheet. But anyway, since we're all about attack speed, I'd go for the Enchantress as she gives you an attack speed buff and you know, Monk's all about attack speed. There's also a cooldown one here as well. 
and a 10% damage increase with erosion. This is based on main stat, and since you are playing a dexterity based character, you don't have intelligence gear. So you could give a bunch of gear to a level one alt, and that alt could roll the intelligence main stat. So, like a necro, witch doctor, or a wizard could roll it for you. It should be pretty cheap since it's like not even level 70 gear. And then you give it back to your character and then this would go up to a cap of 10%. I probably wouldn't worry about min-maxing it too hard while leveling, maybe when you get to 70, but it's just nice to know that you have a little attack speed buff here. For hardcore, I would definitely use the Templar's Cheat Death ability as it shields you from all damage for five seconds. Right now, this seems to be the best. And again, this might help you if you get caught. You know, while leveling on hardcore, we don't have all of our movement abilities right away. Monk's fortunate enough to get it soon but if you get caught cornered at least you have a get out of jail free card or if you you know disconnect or something like that so for the starter build make sure you take the time to roll any gear that is bad you want to look for like double crit main stat items similar to this where you have double main stat double crit 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 damage and if you get squeeze in attack speed that's good because you know attack speed is your friend i like crafting fist weapons along the way because i feel like the extra spirit and you can get like spirit regen on the fist weapons helps me cast ep more often since ep does a lot of the damage that's like our main spirit Bender. All the testing is not going to have any Paragon included, no big gems, no legendary gems, nothing in the cube beneficial that would affect testing. Here's my starter build. I'll try to go slow, but not too slow for you guys. <laughs> like we talked about, this is all about attack speed everywhere, jumping in, getting that damage. Um, the sweeping winds is stunning them for RA gives you that extra 20% damage and we're using the big mangle that we talked about. You can get your four piece set from Hadrig without even doing like Torment 1. So I would definitely recommend you at least get your two piece. We're gonna talk about the two piece soon. The two piece is really, really good. And you can see with no stats, nothing in the cube, we're kicking butt. And don't forget the first GR you do every single season, you're gonna get a Bane of the Powerful and you get Laud within the first couple gems as well. So what do we have here? Missile dampening. So you just basically hold down your generator and dash out of danger, but I also built it kind of tanky with Harmony. Make sure you keep up Sweeping Winds. Sweeping Winds is continuously freezing them, proccing Relentless Assault, giving you that 20% more damage. And um, this is pretty chill build. And again, this is on T1. I would not even do this on T1. I would do it like on hard to get your two piece because that's when it starts to ramp up right away. I really thought this would be the harder one, um, but wizard ended up being a little bit more challenging compared to monk. And I can't wait to showcase it here. So here's what the four piece starter looks like, right? So the two piece, your spirit generators have a 25% increased attack speed, more juice, and they do 400% increased damage to your generators, right? So that's what the three generators that we're talking about, we're gonna be focusing on. And if you got that flying dragon, it's gonna be off the hook, like we talked about. The four piece dashing strike spends 75 spirit, but refunds a charge. So now all of a sudden, spirit's an important thing. So we have to attack really fast to get our spirit back. And we have to be mindful so we don't run out of spirit. Because if we can't dash, we could die in hardcore or we can get caught in a bad position. As an example, with the starter build, I use sweeping wind, right? To freeze them, stun them. I need all the damage I can get. Once I get the damage, then I need to turn my sweeping wind into inner storm to get spirit per second to be able to keep funding my dash charges. Let's jump into the GR20 clear with the set. Same concept as before, but this time we just are mindful of our spirit and we're generating more spirit. But the punchy punchy is the same, right? Um, I like to use EP on the elites and then just hold down generator, right? So I have an EP mobs, hold down generator to full resource. EP. The fire EP has a dot. Whereas like the cold EP is 6,000 damage, it does way more DPS, but only when you have something to explode onto. So this way it's just ticking away and no matter what, it's gonna take that damage, right? So I find this to be the best. If you have Gundo gear, you can make a case for the cold rune and it's truly up to you. Experiment with it. It's really easy to swap back and forth between the two to see what you prefer. I prefer fire up until like, maybe I get like six piece Yuliana or something like that. But you can see this is an easy as heck GR20 clear. Let me kill another elite for you guys so you can see. And then again, if you have resource, you have teleport. You can dash, dash, right? As much as your heart content. When you're at a resource, it pulls a charge. So then you have no charge and you can't dash. 
So save one charge if you can, as um, you know, that's really important. And then you are gonna be spending resource on EP. So just, you have to kind of balance it a little bit. But again, it's um, pretty chill, pretty chill GR20 build. Let's just not die in the video and be sad. There, wait for the explosion. You can see we're pulling ahead easier. I see the power up there. And we're even using like Air Ally, Mystic Ally um, for resource if you get crudest boots. So it's like one to starter, attack speed. And then from your two piece onward, attack speed and resource regen. I'm not sure if I shored the four piece build. So let me just do that just in case. Um, but now we're on to the six piece big one here. Crippling Wave we're still using. And then we'll cover the set as well. The six piece set bonus, your spirit generators increase the damage of dashing strike to 60,000. So when you dash, you do damage for six seconds. And dashing strike increases the damage of your spirit generators by 6,000 for six seconds. So same name of the game, attack speed one, resource two, and just make sure you dash every six seconds. So every tier adds a dude thing that we're looking out for, but it's really easy. This is actually like having a speed build early on and the better you handle the resource, the more damage you're gonna do and the faster you're gonna be. This build, this build is actually really fun to play as a starter. And I like that it ramps up and it has different requirements at each tier. So you can see, since we need so much resource for the six piece, um, I have Exalted Soul now, I have Chant of Renaissance, like it's like more and more resource piling in. The first time you kill Malthiel, you get Reaper's Wrap, so you can definitely look out for those. But here we are on T7 with just the yellow starter build and nothing else. Again, keep up sweeping wins, jump in, and start punching. And then just make sure you dash every six seconds. Look how much DPS we do, right? This is with no Bracer, no Gundo gear. <laughs> Nothing, man. I was shocked that this build was so cozy. Like I've made these before and they've been easy, but I guess I've had fun this time for whatever reason. Um, maybe the build's just getting slowly refined over the years or whatever, but having the mobility of the dashes and look how much damage we did already. Having the mobility and the freedom and um, it scales really nicely. I noticed as I was farming a little bit, trying to see how the build feels and progresses. I like it, man. I'm not gonna play Monk early next season, but I would really not have a problem um, if we had to, right? You would crush T7 until you got whatever gear you wanted. If you wanted to do a dash and strike build, I'll have a build bloodshed.com. There's a link to my website in the description. Um, depends on when you're watching this, the whole website will be updated with builds for season 23. We're gonna have Posh, Tempest Rush, Yuliana Speed Build, Dash Monk, everything that you'll possibly need to get going. If you don't know this season, they added individual leaderboards for every set in the game. So the Thousand Storm set has its own leaderboard. So if you wanna compete with other Gen Monks out there, you can kind of go that route, or you can compete on the Posh leaderboard if you'd like, or you can compete in all the leaderboards and play all the Monk builds to your heart's content. So really it's up to you. You can even go Lawn here. That's one of the cool things about the season is literally just the freedom to kind of do whatever you want. Whatever build you decide, you're definitely gonna wanna spend your blood shards on items that cost 25 at Kadala as they're way more efficient. You can get three times as many 25 cost items as you can 75 cost. So you're gonna get multipliers faster. Focus on those multipliers that give you damage increases for your abilities. Also, as soon as you hit 70, you can craft a Sage set and give it to your follower and your follower set bonuses affect your character. So you'll be getting an extra DB, you'll be getting extra Greater Rift tokens. Make sure that you get up to date on the latest follower information. I'll try to put a link in the description, but it's literally like a few videos behind. You can check it out on the channel. The Sage set is auto learned at the blacksmith going forward. So it's really easy to get those extra DBs, upgrade weapons, upgrade weapons through DBs, and then roll low cost blood shard items at Kadala. If you wanna support the channel further, you can always become a patron. You can sub on Twitch, but honestly, just liking the video, hitting the bell notification, commenting, all those basic things really help push the video to more and more Nephilim out there. And that helps me out tremendously. That's it. I got a lot more videos to film. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is Bloodshed and I'm out of here. Peace.